The defense industry is booming in Latin America. Major corporations like Lockheed Martin and Embraer are selling more planes than ever. This is due to increased economic growth and greater concerns about national security. But one nation in particular has been busy stockpiling weapons. A new report shows that Venezuela has surpassed Brazil to become South America's largest importer of arms in the region. Why? Martin Markovitz is in the capital, Caracas, looking for answers. It was President Nicolas Maduro's first Independence Day celebration as Venezuela's commander-in-chief. As Venezuela showed off to the world newly purchased Russian T-72B1 tanks and soldiers armed with AK-47 rifles, a new report released by the security consultancy firm IHS James revealed that in 2012, Venezuela surpassed Brazil to become South America's largest importer of arms. Worldwide, Venezuela is now the 13th largest importer. But this increase in imports has puzzled many in the region. Sergio Rodriguez Gelfenstein is an international security analyst. We are in a new geopolitical and strategic era. Since 2010, there has been an increase in American military presence, especially in Colombia, where seven new military bases were recently permitted. The reactivation of the American bases and military exercises near Venezuela in countries like Costa Rica and Panama have changed the correlation of the armed forces in the region. Also, because we have the largest oil reserves, it is crucial to establish clear parameters for the defense and security of oil rigs in the hemisphere. Before the election of Hugo Chavez in 1998, Venezuela had been a key ally to Washington as Venezuelan oil was crucial to U.S. economic interests. The U.S. was also Venezuela's principal arms supplier. But the rise of Hugo Chavez and his critical stance against U.S. economic and military power in the world changed that. Chavez soon took an anti-imperialistic stand in which any nearby U.S. military presence was a threat to Venezuela's security. The Venezuelan government said these threats were justified in the face of the numerous coups in Latin America in the last decade that they believed the U.S. was involved in. We had a coup d'etat in Venezuela in 2000, a coup d'etat and the kidnapping of President Aristide in Haiti in 2004, a coup d'etat in Honduras in 2009, a coup d'etat in Paraguay in 2012. It has been clear that behind this was the United States, or at least they knew about it and didn't inform the governments in which they have relations. Tensions between Washington and Caracas further increased when in April 2010, Chavez accused the U.S. of sending an unmanned spy plane that violated Venezuela's airspace. Venezuela says that these imports of arms are crucial so it can maintain its own security against possible aggression from the United States and its neighbor, Colombia. If one looks at a map of the American military presence in Latin America, one can see that Venezuela is surrounded by U.S. military installations in Colombia, Aruba, and most of the Caribbean islands. But most worrisome to Caracas was the announcement in 2010 that the United States was going to construct seven new bases in Colombia near the Venezuelan border. Venezuela has recently responded with the launch of drones produced with Iran's technical assistance. The drones, called UAVs, will be used to monitor Venezuela's borders. Despite their shared cultural heritage, both countries have long been at odds with each other over their respective relations with the United States. While Venezuela has been pulling away from Washington, Colombia has become the U.S.'s key ally in the region and one of the top buyers of U.S. arms. Colombia says it needs these weapons to combat drug trafficking and end its 50-year civil war against leftist guerrilla groups. But Chavez accused the U.S. of using this as a cover to cement aggression between the two neighbors to justify an American intervention in Venezuela. In 2010, Bogotá and Caracas positioned troops along the border, which came close to starting a war. Leopoldo Cormenaris, a defense analyst, believes Venezuela's concerns are overblown. Although Venezuela imports more weapons than Colombia, Bogotá has a far larger defense budget. For example, Colombia triplica la inversión. Colombia has three times more investment than Venezuela in defense spending, if we look at it as a percentage of GDP. Even if we look at overall spending, they still triple it. If we look at last year, 
If Venezuela spent $3 billion in defense in 2012, then Colombia spent nine times more than that. Pointing to the spending difference, some have accused Chavez and now Maduro of using possible war with the U.S. and Colombia as a smokescreen to distract Venezuelans from more pressing problems back home. Currently, Venezuela suffers from hyperinflation, food shortages, and a skyrocketing crime rate. The Venezuela government is trying to keep the anti-imperialist stance going by utilizing the presence of the U.S. in the region. Whatever the U.S. does, immediately Venezuela responds, especially Maduro, who does not have the ranking Chavez had. He has to find a way to pick up the anti-imperialist flag that kept Chavez going. Venezuela's high arms imports may also have to do less with external threats than Caracas's need to upgrade old military gear. In 2006, Washington put in place an arms embargo on Venezuela, which severely crippled Venezuela's military. According to documents made public by WikiLeaks, the U.S. Embassy in Prague made desperate attempts to block an aircraft deal between Erovoro Chori and the Venezuelan government. Venezuela was trying to buy a Czech-built plane, which was featured in the James Bond film Tomorrow Never Dies. When they broke relations politically and militarily, Venezuela had to renew their military gear, which had become obsolete. So Venezuela had to buy from other producers who weren't their traditional sellers. So they looked at other places, and that included China and Russia. But the main supplier now is the Russian Federation. Russia provided 24 Sukhoi fighter jets, 100,000 AK-47 assault rifles, and a host of other armaments to Venezuela. Currently, Venezuela buys 66% of its weapons from Moscow. But this has raised new questions whether Moscow and Caracas's other main ally, Iran, could use Venezuela to establish a military foothold in what traditionally has been the U.S.'s sphere of influence. The United States could be worried that Venezuela would serve as a base for possible mobilization that at any moment can be used to act against the U.S. You can say this is dangerous and delicate in terms of control of the hemisphere, these alliances like the one between Russia and Venezuela. Despite recent moves by Nicolas Maduro to seek better relations with the United States, that may very well now be broken because of the asylum controversy of NSA leaker Edward Snowden. While the U.S. remains the number one buyer of oil from Venezuela, some are worried that one more incident can destabilize the balance of power in Latin America. That was Martin Markovitz reporting from Venezuela. Thanks, Martin.